and I will again create a new viewport, uh, tile it vertically and load the node to surface to the right. Results, load the node to surface to the right. And then now uh, link the two viewports, link viewports, and that we, when we zoom, whoops, that when we zoom in here, I'll wait the same. Uh, let's get them back to roughly the same position. And here you can see a nice effect, and this is exactly what I wanted to point out. So, as you can see, that using this balanced surface-to-surface -surface approach, which changed more so the behavior of the slave surface, you really get a smooth, symmetric result as you would have expected it. And you can see, if you use node-to-surface, you first have a lot of penetration, which numerically is not really okay anymore. In the beginning, this penetration is okay. So let's get back a couple of steps. So maybe here. And here you can already see some hourglassing occurring here on the right. It's also interesting to see. So maybe we should rerun this simulation. Uh, you can see yeah, definitely some hourglassing here. So <clears throat> switching to enhanced hourglass might help. But what I also want to point out that, for example, as you can see uh, here, we should also go to uh, the re uh, extra fine refinement level in order not to get confused. So now we really see uh, the single elements of our, yeah, here this is the node of our master you can see that the penetration of this master node into the slave surface, it's technically okay. And you see here the slave node really does not penetrate the master surface as well as here. So this is the penetration depth that naturally occurs um, because you have this uh, imbalanced master slave approach. You're still using the master slave approach in your balanced surface to surface. However, you can see <clears throat> you can see the same thing here. So the the master node is penetrating quite deeply into our uh, slave elements. However, not a single node of the element is yet in contact with the master. So this averaging over my adjacent nodes also reduces hourglassing, like likeliness to hourglassing, as you can see here, and uh, it will keep um, symmetrical problems quite symmetric. So you can definitely see the advantage of the more advanced surface-to-surface -surface approach. However, as I pointed out, there might be some cases where really uh, switching to node-to-surface uh, yeah, saves the day and we could maybe see the, now check out the effect of friction. <clears throat> How does it look? Yep, well, it doesn't look, but interestingly, it seems to look not as bad as in this case, which makes sense because in on the right case, the nodes that were like split here in this region. So when the master node really penetrated deeply into the slave element and then due to no friction, the, um, the slave nodes were not prevented or hindered to slide, along, to slide along the master surface, which was the case here. So quite interestingly, um, in this case, friction also improved the results a little bit. Um, because you, you don't see this very long elongation of your elements, uh, which is not very good. So whenever you see um, stuff like that occurring, really go back to your model and uh, do something about it. So maybe we can now um, check out if the hourglassing 
so changing our hourglassing uh, behavior might further improve our results. So now we want to then create a new job punch hard. Uh, still, it's an N2S. It's friction 0, 2, plane stress. And now we have enhanced hourglass. Uh, sadly, there is a limit of I don't know how many letters that your main, the name of your job can uh, contain. So, really think about of a smart uh, wording that you use here. Let's save the in between. And what we can also, yeah, and we can of course now um, do some, uh, do also the analysis uh, regarding different, like the, the shear stress and uh, different things. You will definitely see also an impact of whatever uh, we've talked about now on all these. Um, ah, AC yield is automatically uh, activated or included. So these elements here are still elastic and these here are already plastified. So I think especially on the, you should also check the values. So if you load, for example, the, so if we check PEQ here, uh, you see some difference in the maximum values and also the distribution of the values. So for example, look at the shape. Look at the, the shape of, this is the plastic equivalent strain. So here you can see the distribution looks much smoother than the one on the right. So, and this just basically feels more realistic. Um, this is still running, but however, we can already load it. And as you can also tell, enhanced hourglassing um, also uh, adds a lot of cost to your um, to your computation. Uh, however, it might help to reduce the effects that we still saw with the, so we should maybe compare it to the friction based also. So we put that on the right and then have both roughly be at the same time step, so this is time step 0.38, like this, and uh, now we zoom in and see if we have some, or when do we see our glass on the right, then we can, uh, so later down here I would say that we see some of the hourglassing so really towards the end of the simulation. So get it 9.5, which is down here. And see, yes, you see exactly what this, the, this artificial stiffening of the enhanced hourglass control really makes the elements stay rather perpendicular and have these elements always, these lines always connect perpendicular to the contact surface, which is quite nice. So here we only changed the hourglass control mechanism and you can clearly, clearly see a reduction of this effect. So it takes some more time and when you do some further analysis, always uh, don't forget to start your uh, stopwatch and compare the advantage. And yeah, I hope you uh, learned about contact um, today start changing parameters, go to soft contact formulation, then understand about the penetration depth, how it is fulfilled. Um, important might be also if you go to C press, um, that you here check the pressure values. Sadly, they are only displayed um, on the real contact surface. So sometimes they are really difficult to, to look at and yeah, these are important things to analyze uh, if you change to um, soft formulation, to soft pressure overclosure formulations. And yeah, um, keep going, do a lot, study a lot, and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.